welcome to the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise, and this is a special episode and tutorial today. I have wanted to do a series of short tutorials for various knitting techniques, and I thought I would start things off with a German twisted cast on. I have mentioned this in previous classes before as an alternative to a long tail cast on and I just wanted to demonstrate that for you today. This can be applied to just about any type of garment that you would be casting on for a project, um, but in particular it can be used for sock knitting and it makes a very, very clean edge, very flexible, but just slightly cleaner of an edge than the long tail cast on. So I'm really excited to share that with you today and I hope you enjoy it. So here I have a standard issue worsted weight yarn and a US 5 needle. I wanted to use a slightly larger yarn so that it would be easier for you to see what I'm doing and the stitches would be clearer for you. So what I'm going to do is just pull off a length of yarn and you can be generous with this. And I am going to, I have the tail end, which is here, and then the working end coming from the ball. The tail end, I'm going to drape over my thumb. The working end is going to be draped over my pointer finger. When I hold those two together, it creates sort of a slingshot look. Okay, I'm going to tuck one end of the needle into my pocket <laughs> so that it doesn't click and drag on the table. And now I'm going to show you how to do the German twisted cast on. So what you want to do here, I do not use any slip knots in my work. You can, if that is what you're used to, there are no rules, there's no right or wrong. What I do, I put my, hold my needle upside down. And when I turn my needle right side up, it creates a loop, a flexible loop on the needle. And that is my first stitch. So now I'm going to bring, really create, here's a better look to that slingshot look here. This is, the, this is the position you want your hands to be in. And what I'm going to do now is you have two loops draped over, okay? So it's, it's one side of the loop, the other side of the loop. And then just a single loop over my, in my pointer finger. I'm going to take my needle and go under both loops, just like that. I'm going to come through those two loops, come over and catch the yarn on my pointer finger, turn my hand slightly just to open that loop back up and then come through. When I reposition my thumb, that is as tight as I want that stitch to be. Okay, I'm not going to give it an extra tug. You always want your cast on edge to be as loose as possible. So I'm going to do that again. I'm gonna do that several times. <laughs> I'm going under both loops I'm going to bring my needle down through the two strands. I'm going to come up and catch the yarn on my pointer finger. Turn my hand slightly just to open that loop. If I stay this way, it's a little hard to come through. If I just turn my hand slightly and open that space, I come back through, reposition my thumb. So I'm going under, come through the loops, go over, and back through the loops. Okay, reposition my thumb. Again, under, come through the loops, come over and catch the other yarn, and down through the loop, and reposition my thumb. So I'm just gonna do that a couple more times for you to see. There we go. And I just gave a little pull because I need a little more yarn. So under both, down through the loop, come over and catch, down through the loop, reposition. Under, through, come over, down through the loops, and catch. And there, super flexible. There is enough space between my stitches. Okay, if you pull too tight, I'm going to pull this next stitch really tight to show you what happens. 
if you give that a really good tug, what happens is that stitch is not going to move. You've reduced the space between the two stitches and your cast on edge is going to be too tight. One of the keys, one of the key elements to keeping your cast on loose is making sure that there is space between your stitches. Some people like to cast on over two needles. Some people will just try to cast on as loosely as they can over one. What I tend to do is put my finger, so I this is the last stitch I cast on. I'm going to rest my finger there, go under, go down, over, and down. I'm going to hold that stitch right there, reposition my thumb, and there's my space. Okay, again, there was no space between these two, but just keeping my finger there creates that little space that I need and my stitches are not tight. Okay, and that basically is your German twisted cast on. Now, make sure that you are going in the correct direction so that your stitches are laying correctly on the needle. All right, and now I'm going to pause and then I'm gonna cast on a few more stitches, show you how to join this in the round and start knitting your first first row or first round. So I've cast on several stitches on this needle, probably not enough because there is a little bit of pulling, but I just wanted to show you if you were closing this project, whether you're closing this project for a, or beginning this project, I should say, for a circular project or just a flat piece back and forth, you're going to start knitting the same way. Just go into your first stitch, grab your working yarn, and you are going to start knitting. And your stitches are sitting perfectly on the needle. You have this lovely clean edge right along here and there is the beginning of your first row or round. And there you have it. That is a German twisted cast on. And just to show you both sides, the two sides are actually identical. So I'm going to hold it this way and then I'm going to turn it and you can see that the two sides look the same. And that is also the beauty of this cast on. It can be reversible. Okay, and there you have it. And there you have it. That is a German twisted cast on. Again, this cast on method can be used for any knitting project. I love to use it for my socks. I also like using it for cowls because it really does give a nice clean edge for your project. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to bringing you more. Thanks so very much for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, as always, just leave them in the box down below and I will be happy to chat with you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining me.